Well, Coca-Cola Europe Pacific Partners has an ambition to reach net zero emissions by 2040. Within that, we've set an initial science-based carbon reduction target to reach a 30% reduction by 2030, and that's on top of a 30% reduction we've already achieved since 2010. There's a couple of things that we're putting in place to make sure that we are on track to meet those targets. First of all, we have put in place a £250 million investment plan over a three-year period to help us deliver that, to deliver those targets. We've also put in place very strong supplier engagement targets. So we're looking across our full value chain, scope one, two, and three emissions, and we've realized that 90% of our emissions are in scope three. So we're engaging directly with our suppliers to ask them to follow our lead on not just setting science-based targets, but also moving and shifting to use 100% renewable electricity, which is exactly what we've done. So on top of that, we've also put carbon reduction alongside EPS and ROI as part of our long-term management incentive plan. So we're putting environmental targets, carbon reduction targets, alongside financial metrics, right at the heart of what drives our business. On top of that, we've transitioned to 100% renewable electricity. We're making sure that we are investing in buying as much recycled plastic as possible, helping us move away from, from using oil-based fossil fuel virgin materials. We're also doing other things. Um, I, one of the things I've done in Glasgow, which is my home city during COP26, I visited our East Kilbride factory. In East Kilbride, we're beginning to change our forklift trucks so that they used to run on gas, they now run on electric. And it's really simple things like that that help us decarbonize our business. When you look at the challenges that we face, we're thinking about our total value chain emissions. That's across everything from scope one, two and three. The biggest challenge that we face is that 90% of those emissions are scope three emissions. So they're in the hands of our suppliers. We've had a look at where those emissions sit. And we've realized that about 100 of our most strategic suppliers account for about 90% of those scope three emissions. And that's exactly why we've set supplier engagement targets to try and engage that group of suppliers and to, to encourage them to follow our lead on science-based targets and renewable electricity. I think one of the biggest challenges we face is actually a challenge about data. It's actually about ensuring that those suppliers can share data with us so that all of the benefits that that they, uh, they achieve from reducing their own greenhouse gas emissions can also be reflected in our scope three emissions. So for example, if our can suppliers or our, or our plastic suppliers reduce their emissions, if our, if our transport suppliers, if we can work with them to reduce their emissions, then it's also helping us reduce scope three emissions. So really the challenge is a collective one. It's about our scope three emissions, but it's about somebody else's scope one and two emissions. And, it, and the real challenge is about how we collaborate, how we collaborate, how we work together to drive down emissions across our entire value chain. Well, the Sustainable Innovation Forum has provided a great platform to discuss the challenges we face with other like-minded companies. We're all facing the same challenge, which is about decarbonization and how we move from business as usual to a place where we are decarbonizing and transforming our businesses. In terms of COP26, we're, the, we're in day two of, of week two. Uh, and, and one of the big takeaways that I've had is that there's a very, very strong message coming from the business community. And the business community, 900 plus businesses have signed up to a 1.5 degree pathway, setting science-based targets. And that is sending an incredibly strong message to say we're ready to transform our businesses, we're ready to decarbonize, and we're ready to realize that business as usual is not an option. I think together with that business voice, I've also been watching what's been going on in the streets of Glasgow. And we've had a very, very clear message from civil society and future generations saying, we have to take a different path. We have to decarbonize, we have to halve global emissions within the next decade, and we have to be uh, on a trajectory to, to be meeting net zero by 2050 at the latest. And I think when you take that business voice together with that very strong civil society message, together we're collectively sending a message to our political leaders who are over in the blue zone, thrashing out final texts on, on COP26 because we have to decarbonize. We have to keep temperature increase to 1.5 maximum. We've got to keep that on the table coming out of COP26. And we've got to make sure that we're on track to halve global emissions 
over the next decade and that's absolutely critical and that those two messages are critical in making sure that our political leaders understand the strength of feeling from both the business community and civil society.